Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be part of this auspicious colloquium or event. Thank you to the organizers, USAS, IIUM, and IUA for extending this invitation for me to get involved in this session. As the Permanent Secretariat of ASEAN Islamic University Association, or AIUA, which USAS is also the founding member and currently serving as the Secretary General, it is gratifying to see the collaboration between USAS, IIUM, and IUA to organize this event. AIUA is an association that aims to assist member institutions to strengthen themselves through mutual cooperation and to achieve international distinction in education, research, and public service. It serves as a hub of information, provides a medium for the discussion of academic development and university development in general, assists members, institutions, in the recruitment and placement of faculty and staff, opens opportunities for academic staff and students exchange, offers consultancy services, strengthens the relationship with regional and international bodies, and keeps member institutions informed about development in the region. All the aforementioned visions are embodied and realized today with this colloquium. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the year 2020 onwards had been unprecedented where the world globally has been inundated by the pandemic and been put to a halt. All sectors are affected, none are spared, the academic world included. The researchers and budding researchers in tertiary institutions, the change of dynamics and norms following the adapt adaptation of life in the era of pandemic could be a double-edged sword. The year 2020 had, been the world, had, had seen the world dealing with a crisis that was beyond our control. And the only solution is nothing but to adopt and adapt to the new normal. The restrictions and limitations that came with pandemic had seen to the involvement of things. For example, traditional face-to-face -face interaction held as a physical event where brilliant minds convene and exchange ideas, the inevitable has seen to exchange where virtual meetings and webinars have become the new replacement. Where does that future hold for research sustainability in the wake of pandemic? While the pandemic closed many doors, it also opened many more. Despite the significant disruptions by lockdowns and communication channels, social and physical isolation, cancellation of meetings and long plan event, delays in delivery of research project, the global crisis has seen to the rapid rise of technology and innovations to overcome these obstacles. The most notable breakthrough research that the pandemic had witnessed is easily the development of vaccines that was achieved in record time. On principle, the process of earning a postgraduate degree is to make a person think and act scientifically around problems and issues while in bringing the gaps in the respective fields of discipline. Despite the pandemic being the biggest global disruptor of modern time, researchers by nature have to be quick on their feet to adopt and adapt to the situation in sustaining the quest for findings and outcomes. Last year, for three days in a row, I participated and gave my opinion on the presentation of the PhD thesis proposal for Doctor of Philosophy candidates of University Sultan Azran Shah all six candidates were from Indonesia and Uganda who went back 
to their respective home countries following the movement control order. Initially scheduled as a physical session, the circumstances has led for the session to be conducted online. A novelty then, but regular fixture now or today. A key foundation to research process during the presentation of the thesis proposal, the candidate was obsessed or rather assessed on various aspects, including whether the candidate understands the basic on how to seek truth through a scientific process, or whether the research will later confirm the work of previous studies or rejecting that was said to be true by previous researchers, or will the proposed research explore new truth that have not, not been explored by previous studies. On average, I've I found candidates are quick to choose a research title without first mastering the knowledge in the discipline used to give treatment to the PhD research work, which could be detrimental to a research sustainability, pandemic or no pandemic. As a guide, when I was pursuing my master's degree in the, degree in the US, the requirement to pass my master's was only 30, 33 credit hours. But I took 64 credits before I graduated, six months or almost a year later than my cohort group. Whereas others with such an amount of credit can already get two master's degree. However, my interests were different. I, I was not in the pursuit of the certificates, but the acquisition of the discipline fundamentals. After the candidate goes through the coursework of a minimum of 90 credits, the candidate will be tested in a comprehensive examination. Passing a comprehensive examination ensues a candidate to be recognized as having mastered the field or discipline in which he or she is engaged or specializing in. Some candidates have had to take a thorough exam or comprehensive, exam comprehensive examination for several times. Only after passing a thorough examination, then a PhD candidate is allowed to start work to produce a dissertation. The title of this, the dissertation is built by the candidate with the supervisory committee after the students have gone through the process of mastering the field, subfield, and finally, a dimension in the subfield that is the title of his or her dissertation. The dissertation is only a part of the requirement or partial requirement for the title of doctor upon the completion of the program. Such is the process that candidates need to go through before choosing a title for a scientific paper or writing a paper for their proposal presentation stage. As for the tradition, tradition in the United Kingdom, they accept candidates on the basis of submitted PhD research proposal that is evaluated by by the prospective supervisor or a committee or rather faculty in the department. Universities in the UK consider and recognize a candidate who is doing a PhD as a senior partner or senior colleague to academics in the faculty. Therefore, the assumption is that a candidate has equipped himself with extensive, extensive knowledge in the discipline he has or planning to venture into. The candidate is assumed to have spent years reading and discussing with colleagues of the same discipline. During the period, he had scientific questions in his mind that had not been satisfactorily answered through his reading, nor through the opinions of fellow scholars of the same discipline. He has already very clear with the question and had no choice but to choose the third path, which is to do a process of scientific research to prove his hypothesis. Remember, the process of answering the first question of scientific curiosity is by reading the work of previous people or other previous scholars, previous researchers. For the latter, it requires candidates to debate, discuss, engage in forums, seminar, colloquium, and seek advice from colleagues in the same field. A candidate who wants to do a PhD is a candidate who has been immersed with knowledge activities for a long time, 
but with big and scientific questions remaining unanswered and waiting to be explored and verified. As a senior scholar, an academic can simply do his research work alone and then present it for critic by peers in the field after obtaining research findings. This is why in the UK tradition, there are rules in obtaining a PhD degree or scientific work that has been completed and then evaluated, evaluated by a, a number of evaluators appointed by the university. However, many choose the journey of seeking the new permission to be confirmed by one or more senior colleagues from the very beginning of setting their proposal. The senior friend is dubbed the supervisor. There is a difference of tradition for committees in the United States compared to the tradition of individual supervisors in the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom, after a PhD candidate gets a supervisor, usually the supervisor will challenge the candidate to rethink whether scientific curiosity is really valid and required research or whether it is researchable. It does not matter whether it is an empirical, laboratory or theoretical research. For that reason, a supervisor who truly knows his or her role will continue to challenge his or her protege who may be anxious with unanswered questions. The first way a supervisor does is to ask the candidate to read and read and read as long as there is a previous person's work in the field and present it, present it to the supervisor. If the supervisor is a generous person, I don't use the term good supervisor, the supervisor will give and recommend the candidate to read the reading list provided by the supervisor and return to him or her with comments. This aim to train candidates to do critical and extensive, extensive reading, also known as critical review of related literature. It is not just a review, it is a critical review of related literature literature. Consecutively, the candidate will make a summary of each work on this work and then into a chapter called a review of previous work or as I said earlier on, critical review of related literature. It is not just a narration of a narration of literature but rather that the accumulative literature that he has uh, accumulated, accumulated must be critically analyzed by the candidate. This is where the difference in the process of doing research work in the US and in the UK. In the US, United States, coursework or subjects help candidates identify works and the fields and subfields assigned by the lecturer compared to the UK system, which is heavy towards private work or independent study. Although there are also some provision of independent study in the US system. This is so that the candidate really knows the field comprehensively and knows about the subfield versus the wider field. From there, then the candidate chooses what he wants to study from the subfield and then makes it, makes it the title of his research, research thesis. After the process is completed, then the supervisor confirms that the scientific curiosity is genuine and will only be answered by the research process who always call it warrants a research and reasonable. The agreement of the respective parties, the PhD candidate and the supervisor, will be tested in a knowledge council called the thesis proposal defense session, which will be attended by as many insiders and outsiders who are interested in criticizing, spotting, suggesting improvement and some new candidates, PhD candidates, may also want to learn from the uh, presenter of how to go about preparing a research proposal. The purpose is so that there is no longer a reasonable doubt that the candidate's question does indeed need an answer through research. If, can, it, if it can be answered through other means, why must one engage in doing research? This is the justification of why research is necessary. Not answered through reading and not even answered by experts in the field scientifically. If there is an answer, it is only at the level of opinion, opinion that is not supported by first-class evidence. 
the method of research is also selected from the appropriate means to answer the question. This is where the term qualitative research, quantitative, uh, quantitative triangulation of both laboratory testing or various other methods usually appear. Many parties are involved in the process of completing a PhD in the US, such as lecturers, committees, comprehensive evaluators, and so on. Therefore, only anyone uh, can offer themselves as a, before, uh, therefore, anyone can offer themselves as a candidate. Confirmation to be a candidate is usually confirmed after a year of being in a program called nomination. In the UK, a candidate is considered to have held a high position in his or her field. That is why there are times someone who already has a master's degree applying to be a PhD candidate is placed first in the position of a master of philosophy. Once the supervisor is satisfied, satisfied that this candidate is a good candidate for a PhD venture, then the candidate is considered a PhD candidate. The system in the UK also provides an opportunity for outstanding bachelor's student who have earned a first class degree or who have long experience in the field to become PhD candidates with, without a master's degree. The Malaysian system is sometimes a mixture of tradition in the US and tradition in the UK due to the background of the administrators, the authorities, and also lecturers who, whose background uh, they have gone through US or UK higher education system. This influenced the tradition of universities in Malaysia in the process and approach of PhD degree work. A strong foundation in the understanding of these fundamentals and process would be crucial in ensuring the sustainability of research come hell or high water. Addressing the issue of research sustainability, a research with a good and strong foundation from the start is inevitably and undoubtedly sustainable, regardless in the midst of a pandemic or non-pandemic. However, this is only true if the researcher is one that is quick on their feet to adapt and adopt intervention should hindrance, hindrance and obstacle be in, in their way. Whatever the goal, it must be the same. That is to answer the scientific curiosity that is not answered by building the existing body of knowledge that has been recorded and not even answered by colleagues in the same field orally through the medium of knowledge such as seminars, colloquium, workshop, and so on. There is a kind of dissatisfaction within a scholar to find an answer that is not yet answered by other means. On that note, I bid everybody a good and fruitful colloquium and getting the best out of the discourse. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.